but I'm prepared to risk that amount to prove my point. If you had all the solitude in the world, I don't believe you can do it. And what is the lonesomest spot on earth? A summer resort in the winter. I've got just the place and I dare you to go. All right, I'll take the dare. Then it's a bet? It's a bet, 5,000 bucks. You're on. <laughs> I made a lot of easy money, Hal, but never $5,000 in 24 hours. Yes, but you haven't made it yet, my lad. There's still a 10,000 word story to be written between midnight tonight and midnight tomorrow night. Well, writing a story doesn't bother me. It's getting to this uh, lonesomest spot on earth. Where, where is it? Ball paid in, about six hours from New York. It's closed for the winter. But I can wire my caretaker to meet you and let you in. Give me a key and I'll let myself in. <laughs> I haven't got one. Elijah has the only key there is. Who? Elijah Quimby. He's the caretaker. Oh. He'll just let you in and leave you to your solitude. Oh, great. I'll be glad to get away from New York. You know, I'm fed up with the place. Plowing around here in the snow and... Uh, well, when do I leave? Uh, you'll have to catch the 455 out of Grand Central. Here's your call, Mr. McGee. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, do it. I'm leaving town. Pack my things. Uh, you know what I need. Uh, by the way, see if that portable typewriter is behind the bookcase. Uh, now, I win the bet if my story is in the hands of your caretaker, Quimby, by midnight tomorrow night, huh? Yes, if. Yeah, yes, do it. All right, pack it. And meet me at the Grand Central at uh, 445. Right. Well, well, I hope you write something worthy of yourself this time, Mac. A dignified, thoughtful book. Yeah, in 24 hours. Well, at least get away from that wild, thrilling stuff of shots in the night, chases after fortune, and Cupid shooting his arrows all over the place and whatnot. Well, I write books to make money. Well, please, I beg of you, do me one favor. Don't have your hero and heroine fall in love at first sight. Oh, you don't believe in love at first sight? I most certainly do not. <laughs> do you? Do me believe in love at first sight? <laughs> of course not. Don't be silly. But it makes swell fiction. <coughs> Mary, I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting. Well, hello, Irene. Oh, hello, Hal. How are you? Splendid, thanks. You know, my fortune teller told me I'd meet a rich, handsome bachelor today. Oh, you don't have to look any further. No? Let me present my friend, William Halliwell McGee, Mrs. Rhodes. Oh, the William Halliwell McGee? Yes, the same, in the flesh. How exciting. Oh, Mary, Mary, this is Mr. Bentley, Miss Norton. How do you do, Miss Norton? How do you do? And may I present Mr. McGee, who writes the books with the purple covers? How do you do, Miss Norton? Oh, William Halliwell McGee? Do you know, I've read every book you ever wrote. Oh, my God. Have you really? And loved every one of them. You're wonderful. I mean, uh, that's wonderful. Oh, Miss Norton is a writer, too, Mr. McGee. Really? Oh, yes. I'm a newspaper woman. Uh, will you excuse me, Miss Norton? <laughs> I must send that telegram off to the caretaker, Mac. I'll go with you, Hal. Fine. By the way, I'm getting a little fear to party tonight. Sit down. Oh, thank you. You uh, live in New York, Miss Norton? Oh, no, this is my vacation. I'm just spending a week here at the club with Mrs. Rose. Oh, then you'll be around here for a whole week? Yes. Will you be here, too? You bet. I, I haven't a thing to do. <laughs> Newspaper game, huh? Oh, just a little syndicate stuff. Do you do your writing here, Mr. McGee? Oh, yes, I love it up here. It's so healthful, plowing around in the snow. Do you play golf? Well, not in the winter. Oh, of course not. Well, we'll play next summer. Good. I say, Uncle, if you're going to catch that 455, you better shove off. You know, I've got a lot of things I want to talk to you. Uh, will you excuse me? Certainly. Uh, Hal, I've thought it over and I've decided to stay here. What about our bet? Are you trying to back out? The bet? Oh, oh, I can win that next week. Oh, no, you can't win it next week. It's tonight or never. I know, but Miss Norton, I, I, I want to show her the sights of New York, you know, Grant's tomb, Brooklyn Bridge and everything. Yes, I'll show Miss Norton the sights. You're going to be very busy for a couple of evenings. Well, I've got to run along. I, I'm awfully glad to bet you. See, I'll be back at the crack of dawn Thursday. How about a uh, little dinner engagement Thursday night? Yes. Or lunch? Yes. How about breakfast? Breakfast is a date. Yes, yes. <laughs> breakfast. Excuse us, Miss Norton. Yes. Come along, young fellow. Well, uh, and until Thursday? Goodbye. 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 My car's waiting for you outside. So hasn't she the most wonderful eyes? Hmm?
Elijah. What do you suppose anybody wants to be doing in a summer hotel on the top of a mountain in the dead of winter? How do I know? Hmm. This whole thing is very mysterious to me. Of course it's mysterious. Let me see that telegram. Make him comfortable. He has important work to do. Be back tomorrow night at midnight to get his finished book. Ask no questions. Hal Bentley. Hmm. Sounds awful queer to me. Well, whatever it is, it's none of our business. No. You, you better fix up a place for him to sleep, Mother, and light a fire up there. Why, of course. Yes, yes. Maybe the fellow's committed some crime or other. I can't figure it out. Him. Who? Who? Uh, the telegram. I, I mean the man. Well, let him in. Just a minute. Just a minute. What's the matter, young fella? Are you cold? <laughs> Am I cold? I feel pretty rocky, but I've got to laugh at that one. <laughs> You're Mr. McGee, ain't you? Yeah, what's left of me is still McGee. You uh, expected me, of course. Oh, yes. Uh, my name's Quimby. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, my wife, Mrs. Quimby. Delighted, Mrs. Quimby. Glad to meet you, Mr. McGee. Uncommon cold night tonight. Uh. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So this is Ballpate, huh? Well, well. He was nearly scared to death getting a telegram in the middle of the night. Sorry to have brought you out on a night like this, but really it couldn't be helped. Certainly, John in seclusion himself. Oh! What? What happened? Oh, don't be alarmed, Mrs. Crumby. Mr. Bentley's probably had the power turned on. Well, we understand you're going to write a book. Try to, and in 24 hours. Up here? All alone? Yes, I find I concentrate better from midnight on. Must have absolute solitude. Well, perhaps you're right. Mr. Bentley said that you'd turn over the key to this place to me. Yes. Only key in existence, I believe he said. Yes, it's the only key I know of. There ain't no other key. I can swear to that. Well, good. Then I won't be interrupted. Oh. Did you hear that? Oh. Why, that thing's been out of commission all winter. Oh, let's get out of here, Lyle. It's all right. It's all right, Mrs. Grimby. Mr. Bentley probably had the service renewed. I want to find out if I've arrived. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello, Hal. Oh, yeah, a few minutes ago. I'm half frozen, thank you. Yes, everything you said it was, the lonesomest spot on Earth. Yeah, well, your opinion's going to cost you $5,000, old man. Oh, by the way, Hal, I, I want you to give my very best to the charming Miss Norton. Oh, oh no, no, nothing like that. <laughs> All right, fine. You bet. 
Now, you understand that you'll be back at midnight tomorrow night, huh? Yes, to get the book you're going to write. Mm-hmm. 11.30. Oh, now you're quite sure I won't be disturbed. Huh? The only other time I remember anybody coming here in the winter was when the reformers got after a lot of crooked politicians. And they broke in here in the middle of the night and hid a lot of graft money in the office safe. The reformers hid money in that safe? No, the politicians. Reformers never have any money. <laughs> That's splendid, splendid. What are, you, what are you laughing at? Oh, nothing. Uh, crooked politicians, hidden money, reformers. Ah, sounds like a bestseller. Is there ah. anything more we can do for you, Mr. McGee? Oh, no, no, nothing at all. I, oh, yes, you have forgotten something. The key. Oh, yes, the key. Well, now, you're absolutely certain that this is the only key to ball page. Yes, I'm sure. I can swear to it. Good. What are you going to do, lock yourself in? Exactly. I should think you'd be afraid of ghosts. Ghosts? Yes, they've been seen here. Ah, there's an old fellow up in the mountains here by the name of Peters. He's a hermit. A hermit? Yes, he's one of them fellows that's been disappointed in love. His wife ran off with a traveling man. All the summer boarders buy picture postcards from him. He's the fellow that's been frightening people for waving a lantern with a white sheet wrapped around him. But no one ever proved it was him. Well, who else could it be? There ain't no such thing as ghosts. Is there, Mr. McGee? Ghosts and hermits. Not bad at all. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, come along, Mother. Well, good night. I'll see you tomorrow night at 12 o'clock sharp. I'll huh? be here on the minute. And I shall come to see if you're still alive. <laughs> Lord, I should think you'd be scared to death. Good, good night. night. I don't envy your trip. Good, good night. night. Good night. Good night. The only key, huh? Good. Wait, 75 West. Hurry it along, sister. Hello, Miss Wendy? This is Bland. Yes, yes, Ballpate. Oh, it's terrible. Why, it's like Napoleon's tomb. Say, I thought you told me Mayor Cargan was going to meet me here. What? No, I'm not going to wait here all night when I'd go mad. Now listen. I'm going to hide the money here in the office safe. And Mayor Cargan knows the combination. Why, it's the safest place on earth to hide it. How could they get in? Why, there's only one key, and I've got it. Yes. All right, goodbye.
Good evening. Or perhaps I should say good morning. And who are you? I was just about to put that question to you. Did you follow me up that mountain? No, I got here an hour ahead of you. How'd you get in here? Through that door. You lie. There's only one key to that door, and it's right here in my pocket. My dear sir, up until a few moments ago, I was laboring under the same impression. But as long as your key fits the lock, and my key fits the lock, there are evidently two keys to Ballpate instead of one. See? You mean to tell me that's a key to Ballpate? Yeah. I heard you telephone your friends just now and say that yours was the only key in existence. <laughs> sort of handed me a laugh. And you heard what I said over the telephone? Every word. You don't think you're going to live to tell it, do you? Well, I'm no tattletale. I would like to have you answer me one question. Where'd you get your key to ball paint? None of your business. Get me? Yeah, I got you. Hmm. Who gave you that key? Tell you the truth, it's none of your business. Get me? What? Well, that's the answer you gave me, wasn't it? Hey, you've got a pretty good nerve talking to me like that with a gun in front of your face. Well, guns don't bother me. Well, I've never experienced a thing in real life before. You know, I've written so much of this melodramatic stuff that it sort of amuses me to find out that the so-called literary trash is the real thing after all. <laughs> you know, really, old man, I've written you over and over again. Hey, I killed a man once for laughing at me. Say, that's my line. I used that in the lost limousine. 400,000 copies. I'll bet you've read that. What are you doing here anyway? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm trying to win a bet by completing a novel in 24 hours. Yeah, you must think I'm an awful sap to fall for talk like that. Well, if you don't believe me, go up there in that room and you'll find a letter from the owner of this inn proving that I'm telling the truth. Wait a minute, I'll get it for you. Come back here. What's the matter? I've been double-crossed before, young fella. If that letter's up there, I'll find it. Oh, if you don't believe me, look for yourself. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I meant to speak to you about that, old man, really. I'm terribly, terribly ticklish. And I never carried a gun in my life. No? But you've got one up in that room, huh? Well, if you don't believe me, look for yourself. That's just what I'm going to do. Only I think I'll let you lead the way. Well, all right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're a little bit too anxious. I'll go in there first. Get me asked for on police headquarters. Police headquarters, don't you understand? Hello. 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 What the deuce? Somebody trying to get police headquarters? Or try and get them back. And what do you want? Oh, oh, don't you? Don't. It's all right. Why, why, what are you doing here? Oh, I'll explain. I want to call my friend, Mrs. Oh, well, well, wait a minute. How, how'd you get in that door? I locked it with a key, of course. Oh, well, with a key, of course, with key. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. 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 A man? What man? With a revolver. He jumped to the ground and ran down the mountainside. Just a minute. Oh, is anything wrong? Oh, oh, oh no, everything's all right. Oh, 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 dear. Why did you come here, Mary? Oh, don't get excited now. It's all right. Well, the bird has flown. <laughs> but if we got this. What is it? Cute little thing, isn't it? Put it away. Will someone please explain how anything as wonderful as your being here could possibly happen to me? Well, I know how busy you are, so I'll explain in just a few words. You see, I work for a newspaper syndicate, and, um... Uh, why do you stare at me so? Do you believe in love at first sight? What do you mean? You know, I've written about it a great many times, but I never believed in it before. Really remarkable. Uh, you were going to explain your visit here. Oh, uh, well, yes. To begin with, you see, I... Uh... Mm. 
Will you be good enough to answer that phone? Certainly. Hello? What's that? Well, hold the phone. I'll see. Did you want to speak to police headquarters? Oh, yeah. Oh, why... No, just say they must have made a mistake. Hello? No, no such call from here. Must be a mistake. Well, that's all right. Thank you. Now, uh... Hello. Hello, Central. This is Chief Kennedy, police headquarters. You got me a wrong connection. That call didn't come from Baldy. Well, now get busy and find out where it did come from. Hmm. Something mysterious about that. Hmm. Then you did call police headquarters. I did. Perhaps you'll be good enough to answer me one question. I'll answer you a hundred. Well, how did you get in here without this key? Yours is the only key to ball paid in existence, I suppose. So I understand. I see. Well, if it's any news to you, ladies, there are more keys to ball paid than you'll find in a grand piano. Then he lied. Who lied? Remember your promise, Mary. Well? I can't tell you his name, but he is the man who sent me here to get this story. What? What story? Of your $5,000 wager. Remember your promise, Mary. You've made a lot of promises, haven't you, Mary? All I can tell you is that after the wager was made at the club this afternoon, a certain someone gave me what I believe to be the only key to ball paint. And I hurried here to let you in, to get the story of your wager for my newspaper. So may I stay? May you? Or will you? But please tell me where you got that key. Remember your promise, Mary. No, I wish you hadn't brought her with you. What? Oh, excuse me, excuse me, no offense, Mrs. Rhodes. Of course, I understand that Mary's a very promising young woman, but why continually remind her of the fact? <laughs> Pardon me, it's just my little joke, you know. <laughs> then we have your permission to stay? I'd love to have you. Of course, you understand that I've got a lot of work to do in the next 20-odd hours. By the way, who was the man with the gun? Yes, and why did he jump out of the window? Well, you might as well ask me why he placed a package of money in that safe, and why he telephoned the fact to someone who was to relay the message to Mayor Cargan. Mayor Cargan? Yes, what's the matter? Why, Mrs. Rhodes is to become Mrs. Cargan next Sunday morning. Oh, indeed. Congratulations, Mrs. Rhodes. And I apologize for any mistake I may have made. Well, I assure you a more honest man than Jim Cargan ever lived. I sincerely trust you're right. I hope your story proves a knockout. Oh, thank you. I wish... Oh, what do you wish? Oh, nothing... I was just thinking about a wedding. A wedding? Uh, uh, Mrs. Rhodes and Mayor Cargan, Sunday morning. Oh. Well, good night. Good night. Mary, you know that's the sweetest name in the world. Oh, thank you. I still wish you hadn't brought her with you. Uh, good night. Good night. You don't believe Jim Carvin guilty of any treachery, do you, Mary? I don't know. I told you the suburban bribe story we got last night. Mm, yes. Oh, but I sincerely hope the name of Cargan is kept clean for both your sake. Oh, I know, but money in that safe, he said. Yes, I know. And that dovetails with the suburban bribe story. Say, I came down here to do a special, but I may get two sweeps with one broom. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Good heavens, Mary, look! What is it? What's wrong down there? A ghost! A ghost! A ghost! I'll bet you $4 that's the fellow whose wife ran away with a traveling man. It has asthma. I beg your pardon, but have you any idea just how many keys there are to this flat? What are these women doing here? Well, they have to I be... I don't like women. Oh. It's all right, ladies. It's all right. He's not a regular ghost. I know all about him. He's in the picture postcard business. What? Just a moment now, Bosco. 
Say, ladies, will you mind going upstairs to my room for a moment? I want to tell him a little bedtime story. Huh? <laughs> Say, now, that's the second time you've grunted at me. Now, don't do it again, do you hear? Oh, so you're the ghost of Ballpate, huh? How'd you people get in here? You're not going to pull that only key in existence speech on me, are you? The others are imitations. Mine's the real key. The old man gave it to me the day before he died. Uh, well, what old man? You know who I mean. The father of that young scamp that wastes his time around those New York clubs. Well, you're not particularly fond of the present owner of Ballpate, huh? I hate him and all his men friends. You don't like women either? I despise them. How do little boys and girls strike you? Bah. <laughs> you know, I understand your wife now. Anything in preference to you, even a traveling man. Don't mention my wife's name again or I'll break... No, oh, no, no, wait a minute. Don't you make any more bluffs with me or I'll just take that white sheet away from you, put you right out of the ghost business. Uh, Say, why don't you cut off this ghost stuff and be a regular hermit? Yeah. <laughs> What's happened? Is someone hurt? A woman in white. A woman in white. <laughs> They thought it was the ghost. They thought it was the ghost. A woman, get back. Get back. Another key. I just thought I'd give you a little more light so it could work faster. Uh, come on out here, please. You know, really, I didn't think they did this sort of thing outside of melodrama and popular novels, but... You know, you know you're the most attractive burglar I've ever seen. That is, if you are a burglar. Are you? Are you one of the Cargan crowd? Or do you represent the Routon Railway people? No, I'm just an ordinary man trying to win a bet. Would you mind telling me who you are? I will if you'll answer me one question. Oh, I'll answer that for you. Ask it. A friend of mine gave it to me. I know you thought you had the only one in existence, but he lied to you. Oh, I have a cute little key of my own. There are keys and keys, but I love my little key best of all. See? Oh, I can't understand it all. You haven't anything on me. Listen. My husband is president of the Rootin Railway Company. He has agreed to pay a large amount of money for an important franchise. Ah, bribery, huh? Oh, I'm afraid it is. But my husband is being cheated, and Mayor Cargan is at the bottom of it all. Oh, I don't know who you are, but you're a man, aren't you? Yeah. You will help me, won't you? Well, well what do you want me to do? In that safe is a package containing $200,000. $200,000. A man named Bland was to bring it at midnight. Cargan was to follow and find it here. Cargan is coming here? Oh, so they planned it. I must have that money out of there before he arrives. You'll help me, won't you? Don't you understand? My husband is being cheated, tricked, robbed, probably ruined. But I don't know the combination. Oh, there must be something we can do. Please, please, for the sake of my children, help me, please. Well... Who are these women? What are they doing here? Oh, ladies, may I present Mrs... Uh, please, please don't. Uh, will you pardon me for a moment? Certainly. Certainly. Oh, please, please don't tell them who I am. My husband will kill me if he ever learns I've been here on such an errand. You may trust me. I sympathize with you very deeply, madam. And I'll get that money out of that safe. Word of honor. Ladies, I, I, I want you to meet an old schoolmate of mine, Miss Brown. Miss Brown. Now, I have a lot of work to do, uh, but I'll catch up. I'll catch up, provided there aren't more than three or four hundred more keys to the old front door. <laughs> and now, uh, might I see you a moment alone? Why, I'd be delighted. Uh, you'll pardon me, certainly. You just go right along, make yourself to home. Uh, will you be good enough to show her the room, Mrs. Rhodes? Come right along, Miss Brown. Thank you. 
woman lied. She lied? She claims to be the wife of Thomas Hayden, the president of the Suburban Railway. She lied, I tell you. Why, I've known Mrs. Hayden all my life. I went to school with her daughters. Say, somebody's playing a desperate game. Yes, and it's costing me $5,000. I can see that right now. Oh, but what do I care? I've met you. Well, are you going to give this money to that woman? Not if she lied. Oh, but you believe me, don't you? Believe you? Listen, little girl, from the moment you came in that door tonight and I laid eyes on you, I knew that, well, I can write those pretty speeches, but I can't say them when I mean it. There's just nothing I wouldn't do for you. Try me. Very well, I will. You get me that money out of that safe before Cargan comes here to steal it. Why, but that money is proof of the deal. I'll wipe out the streetcar trust and the Cargan crowd in tomorrow's edition of the Star. And furthermore, I'll save Mrs. Rhodes from marrying a thief. Oh, you will do this for me, won't you? Please, please. Yes. What do you want me to do? Well, we must hurry. Oh, can't you think of some way to open that safe? Well, but I... What was that? Somebody's hiding in this room. Now, good night, Miss Norton. Good night. Another minute, he'd had it sure. Is it all there? I don't know. I'll see. Say, so you seem surprised I should find the money here. What do you mean, surprised? I'm going to tell you something, Max. I didn't trust you. What do you mean? I thought you were going to double-cross me. I thought you were going to beat me to this bankroll through that Thornhill woman. Myra Thornhill? Yes, Myra Thornhill. Ah, oh. oh, now, don't play dead. I know every move you made. I've had you watched. I'd made up my mind to kill you, Max, if this money'd been gone. But it isn't gone, boss. You got it. I'm shot. Oh, no, you're not. Come on, toss that package of money over here. Hurry up, I mean business. Jim Cargan. Max, Max, are you hurt? No, I'm all right. Myra Thornhill. So you did try to double-cross me, you... No, 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 one moment, one moment. No, 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 gentlemen. I must insist on orderly conduct. <laughs> Young man, be good enough to put that gun of yours on the desk. Hurry now. That's fine. Now just remove the gun from Mr. Cargan's pocket. Oh. I'm sure he has one. Hurry, please. Oh, that's fine. Now step away from the arsenal. Mrs. Rose, will you be good enough to ask the streetcar president's wife to step back in that room, then lock the door and remove the key? Thank you. Miss Norton, will you be good enough to take those guns and put them in the safe, then turn the combination? That's fine. And now, gentlemen, I must urge you to step up to this room on the balcony on the left. Mrs. Rose, will you be good enough to step over there and lock the door when these gentlemen are on the other side? Mm -hmm. Oh, I shan't keep you there long, gentlemen. I'll release you as soon as I've transacted some important business with this young lady. Now, lively now, gentlemen, lively. That's it. Now, not you left. That is. Now, right in. Now, lock the door, Mrs. Rhodes, and bring me the keys. What do you think of my work? Some roundup, huh? Great. Oh, that's the ticket. So, I, I'm awfully sorry about this for your sake, Mrs. Rhodes. Oh, it's best she should know, isn't it, dear? It's all right. But now, here's your graph, Bunny. We've got to work fast. Now what? I've everything planned. Say, what's the time? Well, it's 1.30, and you can't get a train out of here until 5. But I'll find a way. Say, are you going to stay here? You bet I am, and I'm going to keep this gang here until you telephone me that you're out of danger. But your work! 
Oh, I can write a novel any old time. I can lose this bet and still be repaid a million times over. I've met you. Hmm. Well, good night, Mrs. Rhodes. Good night. Good night. Good night. Adventurers, crooked politicians, safe rob, and love at first sight. I wanted to get away from melodrama. <laughs> and still they come. I beg pardon, but who are you? Why, I'm Mayor Cargan's butler. Mayor Cargan? Yep, he's here. Do you wish to see him? Yeah, tell him that Mr. Hayden of the Root and Suburban Road is calling. I see. You, you were the president of that road, huh? I most certainly am, sir. Your wife's here. What? Yes, yeah, she's upstairs locked in that room. <laughs> just a moment. <laughs> just, uh, just a minute now. I'll, I'll tell the mayor that the president has arrived, huh? <laughs> Are you a crazy man, sir? Well, uh, that's what the critics say. And you know, really, I wouldn't argue the point with them tonight. You just sit down, Mr. Hayden. I'll tell the boys you're here. <laughs> All right, come on, boys. Come on, the president's here. Oh, watch your step now. Watch your step. Be down, boys. Be, be down. One at a time. Easy. And so I'll walk a little behind. Hello, Hayden. What is the meaning of this, Cargan? I don't know. Ask him. Who is he? I don't know, and I don't care. We're nailed. That's all I know. Oh, no, you better come and come back. Sit down and join the boys for me. Oh, go on. Mm -hmm. I'd very much like to know the reason for such strange actions, young man. Well, your wife will be down in a little while. She'll probably tell you all about it. Confound it, sir. My wife is home in bed. Yeah, that's what you think. <laughs> but you're not the first fellow that's been fooled, you know. <laughs> Uh, Hermie, take this key and go up there and unlock that door in the balcony and tell Mrs. Hayden that her husband would like to see her down here right away. Well, hurry along. Now, that's a good ghost. Go on. Go on. <laughs> you better make yourselves comfortable, boys. We're apt to have quite a wait. Well, uh, I'll be running along. Well, you better stick around, Mr. Hayden. I'd like to have your wife meet you. I don't think she's ever had the pleasure. Mm. Here's a novelty at last, a man without a key. Planned. I have his key. I'll let him in. Oh, don't, don't, don't bother. I have a dandy little key of my own. I'll let him in. What the devil sort of a man is this? What's the matter, Governor? I don't know. That's him. That's the man I told you about. He's the one locked me in the room. Hello, hello. You back again? Did you get it all right? No, he's got it. What? Take give me that money. Hey, I killed a man once for hollering at me. Ah. Mr. Hayden, while I think you're getting the shade the best of it, this young lady claims to be your wife. What? You claim what? Go on, holler your head off, Grandpa. I love to hear an old guy squawk. Say, what are you going to do with that money? I haven't got the money. What? what? No, it's on its way to Rooten, where Miss Norton will see to it that it's placed in the hands of the proper authorities at the Rooten Daily Star. The Daily Star? We're gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, sit down there. <laughs> sit down. Sit down. There. Yeah, and you too, Hermie. Go on, be a good ghost. Oh, go on. Yeah, you too, Mr. Hayden. Sit down. I don't care to sit down. Oh, go on. Now, be a nice little president and sit. Confound it, sir. Do you know that I'm president of the Root and Suburban Railway Company? I wouldn't care if you were president of the National League. Now, sit down. There. Now, we stay right here until that telephone rings and Miss Norton tells me that she's safe and sound in Rooten. Maybe three hours or maybe six. So get comfortable and sit as easy as you can. So you did try to double-cross me. The chances are I'd kill you for this. I'm afraid I made a mistake in bringing you here, Governor. You're always making mistakes, you dumb block-headed fool. I'm sorry I got you into this, Myra. Shut up, you fathead. I hope you're all sent to prison for life. <clears throat> it's going to be a nice present little party. I can see that right now. Here, 
Phone, please. Mm, certainly, Miss. Will you hold this for me, dear? Sure. Routon, 498. Yes, please. Please hurry at Central. It's very important. But they will answer. It's the Daily Star newspaper office. Hello. Hello, Mr. Clyde. This is Mary Norton. I've got a marvelous story for you and some important evidence to back it up. It'll be front page stuff, so hold everything till I get there. No, I can't tell you over the phone, but the evidence is in my purse and it's perfectly safe. I'm leaving right away. Two hours of this nonsense. I refuse to sit here another minute. Oh, stick around, Mr. Hayden. We like to look at you. Well, that's it. Well, now, let's see. What can we talk about to keep things lively? I have it. Let's all tell where we got our keys to ball paint. Oh. No? Big secrets, huh? Bland, where'd you get your key? None, None of, your of your business, business get me. <laughs> Perhaps the young lady would be good enough to tell us where she got her key. Well, I've no objection. Myra, please. He gave the key to me. Where'd you get a key to ball paint? I swore never to tell. I suppose he also gave you the combination to the safe. He did. Myra! Oh, shut up, you cry baby. You got me into this mess. Now I'll tell you the whole layout. I was to come here and make off with a package. Cargan was to follow and find it gone. And we were to meet tomorrow and divide the money. You rat, I'll kill you for this. Hey, Cargan, you told me you couldn't get in here unless I met you and unlocked the door for you. Oh, I can explain that. He was to meet you here tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Am I right? Yes, you're right. Well, the plan was for me to steal in here and take the money. Then he was to keep his appointment with you tomorrow morning and appear just as surprised as you would have been when you discovered the safe empty and the money gone. Why, he was going to cross not only you, but Hayden and everyone else connected with the bride. He tried to cross you, and you, Max, tried to double-cross him. Yeah, and if I hadn't been interrupted by our friend here, I'd have gotten the money and triple crossed the whole outfit. What? Well, why not? Scruples are a joke in dealing with crooks. Who's the crook? Uh, now, Mr. Cargan, I'm a school teacher here, and I'll be a good little mayor and sit. So you did try to cross me, huh? Why shouldn't I? You've been around crossing everybody, ain't you? You're a great big bluff, Cargan. And you're never gonna kill anybody. You haven't got the nerve. But I have. And the next bluff you make at me will be your last. You didn't think you were gonna get that franchise for 200,000, did you, Hayden? Why, this man would have bled you for half a million before the bill went through. And I dare him to call me a liar. Is that true, Cargan? Yes, that's what I was going to do, rob you. You're trying to rob the city, aren't you? Why, you're as big a thief as I am. And let me tell you this, Hayden. If I go up for this, you'll go with me. Rob you? Uh, you've got a lot of gall to yell about being robbed, you have. Uh, I hope the prison catches fire and you're all burned to a crisp. <clears throat> this woman who took the money, who is she? She's a newspaper reporter on the Daily Star. The Daily Star. The paper that's hounded me ever since I've been in office. They got me this time, sure. Uh, answer that phone, Miss Thornhill. Hello. Yeah. Ball paid in, yeah. Just a moment. Someone wants to talk to you. I'll get the name. Uh, who is this, please? Miss Norton. Oh, well, uh... Tell her to uh, give you the message, and then you repeat it to me as you get it. He says he can't come to the phone and wants you to give me the message. You're talking from the commercial house. You missed a package of money five minutes ago. The money lost. That settles it. There goes their evidence. Tell him you're nearly crazy, and shall you notify the police? Hey. Well, what shall I say? Whoever heard of losing $200,000? Hey, she's holding out. You're a quick thinker, Miss Thornhill, but I don't believe you got that message at all. Come here, Hermie. My name's not Hermie. My name's Peter. Well, whatever it is, come here. 
Now, you don't like anybody in this room any better than I do. Take this gun until I get that message. Guard that door and you kill the first man or woman that makes a move. Do you understand? I'd like to kill them all. But don't shoot unless you have to. Hello? Now, Cargan, I've got you at last. What happened? I mean, you, you really lost your money? <laughs> Put them both in the linen closet up there and lock the door. What's the idea, Cargan? Go on, I'm school teacher now. Do as you're told. Miss Thornhill, get on that phone over there and tell that woman not to notify the police. Tell her she's to return here at once and see what she says. Hello. Uh, yeah. Why, the message is that you're not to notify the police, but return here at once. Yeah. Goodbye. All right. As quick as she can get here, she says. You harm a hair of that girl's head and I'll get you if it's the last act of my life. And I've read that kind of talk in book. Yeah, well, I write books of that kind, but I'm talking real talk now. Go on, get in there. Come on, you two. What are you going to do with the money if you find it on a car? Uh, keep it, of course. <laughs> Say, Hermie, if I can get you out of this room... Will you keep Miss Norton from coming back here? But I tell you, that's my money, Cargan. Now, our agreement still holds. You people will get the franchise. Don't worry. Why, you've openly declared that you were going to rob me of the money. That's because I was mad clean through. Wasn't I being accused right and left? I... I didn't mean a word I said, Hayden. Don't remember now what I did say. But I haven't forgotten what you said to me, Mr. Max. I don't want you to forget it. I want you to remember it all your life. Why, you're nothing but a cheap coward, Cargan. So, you tried to double-cross me, eh? Why, certainly. Who are you? Why, you double-crossing snake out. You oh, my... oh, hey, oh. Can't pull that kind of stuff when I'm around. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. Now, madam, what do you mean by claiming to be my wife? Listen, old man, don't annoy me because I've got a nasty temper. Go on now, get away before I lose it. Get away from that safe. What are you doing there? You needn't be afraid. I ain't going to do anything. Only I... <laughs> Keep out of this, young fellow. You know what's good for you. Who fired that pistol shot? It was an accident. Shut up. I didn't mean to kill him. It was an accident. Oh, we have a murder case on our hands, huh? Suicide. That's it. She killed herself. She killed herself! Oh, no, no, it is murder and murder in the first degree, and there's the murderer. And I'm going to make you pay the penalty. I'm afraid you're in wrong, young fellow. She's dead. You killed her, all right. Better plead insanity, old man. It's the only chance you've got. Bad business, this carrying guns. Who was the woman? Your wife? Oh, no, 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 you can't get away with it. You forget that I have a witness in Peter's, the hermit. Get, get him, bring him down.
He's gone. Gone? Gone where? He must have found a way. He knows the place better than we do. I saw you when you fired. You shot to kill. I tried my best to knock the gun out of your hand, but I was too late. Good thing I grabbed you before you got away. But you shouldn't have choked her. That was the brutal part of it. Why, you... <laughs> Please, keep quiet! Oh, not open the no, door. you don't. Hey, wait a minute. I'll take that key. I'll take that gun I saw you stick in your pocket, too. What authority have you? Close your trap. Everything's all right, Chief. He's all right. Hold on to my here. Why, hello, Mr. Mayor. What are you doing here? I can explain all that. I'm glad you got here, Chief. Who are you? I'll tell you who I am at the proper time and place. We'd better get on the job here quick, Chief. What are you trying to do? Run the police department? Thousands of dollars have been involved and a crime has been committed besides. I advise placing every man in this room under arrest immediately. Don't be afraid. I got men outside. Nobody will get away. Lou Max, eh? Quite a crowd of celebrities. What, Mr. Hayden? Hello. Well, this is a real highbrow affair, ain't it? Well, come on, somebody open up. You got anything more to say, young man? I prefer to tell my story in the presence of witnesses. Don't mind him, Chief. He's a madman. Well, who was it called up police headquarters two hours ago and then said it was a mistake? I did. How comes a woman on his voice on the wire then? I don't intend to say another word until I'm under oath. I charge these men with conspiracy and murder. What is this, Cargan? Poor devil's gone mad, I think. He shot and killed a woman a few minutes ago, and he's accused every man here of the crime. Murder, eh? Who is the woman you shot? Oh, don't let these men get away with this, Chief. I can prove my innocence. There's the real murderer right there. These men are accusing me, trying to save their own necks. I can prove why I'm here tonight. Ask them their reason for being here. He's been raving that way for the past ten minutes, Chief. What's your reason for being here? I came here to write a book. You're right. He's a lunatic, all right. Who was the woman who was killed? Her uh, name is Thornhill. Where is she? In one of those rooms up there. Well, I just looked it round over before I sent for the coroner. What room is she in? I'll show you, Chief. Take my tip, young fella, and don't try and get away. One of those cops outside will blow your head off, you do. You needn't be afraid. I'm going to stay right here and see to it that those other men do, too. They generally go out of their mind after they shoot. I carried the body from that room through the secret passage to the cellar. What? I heard them accuse you of the crime. They'll never find the secret passage, and they'll never find the body. What you do that for, you darn fool? You're mistaken. No joke, Chief. I tell you, there's been a murder committed here. And where's the victim? In the cellar. What? Uh, hey, what are you trying to do? Trap me in the cellar? I tell you, the victim's in the cellar, Chief. Then you can judge for yourself whether I'm crazy or not. <laughs> Search the cellar of this place and report to me here what you find. Hurry up now.
Now listen. If this is a practical joke, you'll all land in jail for it. I ain't going to be made the laughing stock of Asher One Falls. I'll tell you that right now. Miss Norton. Hello, who's this? Oh, what are the police doing here? Who is this woman? She's a thief. She stole a package of money. Whose money? My money. Oh, my money. My money, Chief. Where is the money? Oh, the money's been lost. What? Hey, what are you people trying to do to me anyway? Where did you lose the money? Oh, I don't know. Somewhere between here and Ruby. I've searched every inch of the mountain from the bottom to the top. Where is Mrs. Rhodes? Well, I left her at the commercial house. How much money was it? $200,000. Come on now. Cut out this kid myself. How much was it? That's the exact amount, Chief. Where'd you get this money? I gave it to her. Where'd you get it? From Mayor Cargan. Where'd you get the money, Cargan? He took the money from the safe. How'd you open the safe, Cargan? I didn't open the safe. Then who did? Peters, the hermit. Who put the money in the safe? Blam, that man on your right. Where'd you get the money put in I the safe? I got Mr. Hayden here. Is this true, Mr. Hayden? Hayden? I refuse to answer for fear of incriminating myself. Yeah. Hayden gave the money to Bland. Bland put the money in the safe. Peters opened the safe. Cargan took the money from Peters. This fella took the money from Cargan, gave the newspaper reporter. She loses the money in the mountain. Then somebody killed a woman, and the corpse got up and walked away. And you expect me to believe this bunk, do you? Come on, let me get out of that shot. Well, yes. Yeah. This is all we can find out, our chief. Ah, uh, for the love of my Get on over there. Come on, you fellas. Question anybody who passes up or down the mountain. Okay. You'll have to step upstairs, miss. Who is this woman this girl said she left at the commercial house? Mrs. Rhodes. She's all right. How do we know she's all right? Maybe they're working together. That's enough, man. I'll call up the commercial house and see if she's there. Hello? Give me three five, Central. Quick. Well, call me when you get it. What's her name again? Mrs. Rhodes. Oh, 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 she's dead! Someone killed her! There's a woman there in that room! Oh, this is What'd you do? Bring her back to that room? Isn't that what you told me to do? Oh, no, you blithering idiot. Uh, hey, what are you people trying to do to me? Don't touch that phone! Yes, I called you. Now listen, Charlie Kennedy talking. Is there a woman there by the name of Rhodes? How long ago? He asked you to take care of a package that she got back? Where have you got it? In the safe? Now listen, Charlie. Call up headquarters right away and get a man over there. Give him that package and tell him to bring it up to Ball Pate in as quick as he can, understand? Then send the coroner up here. Never mind now. Do as I tell you. You take orders from me. Now get busy and keep your mouth shut. She left the hotel a quarter of an hour ago. She put the package in the safe before she went. How do you account for it? She must have stolen the money from me. Ain't got somebody. What is it? Hey, Chief, we got a woman. Shoot her in. Is there any trace of the money? Are you going to have these women searched, Chief? No. We'll wait till we find out what's in that package she left at the commercial house. No, you don't. <sighs> Nobody's going to get away from here till I get this thing all settled up and find out who killed that woman. Killed a woman? What does he mean? You stole that money from me, didn't you? I'll never trust another woman as long as I live. Yes, I did steal the money. But I did it for you, Jim Cargan. I knew that package was the evidence that would convict you. And you stand there ready to turn against me. Very well, now I'll turn. 
Officer, I, no, I, I really... These men have bargained to cheat the city of Bruton, and I demand their arrest on a charge of conspiracy. It's a lie. It's the truth, Chief. What have you got to say to this, Cargan? Nothing at all. I'm through. So am I. I can't stand this any longer. I'm going mad. I'll tell you the truth. I killed that woman upstairs. I'll confess. I'll tell you state evidence. Anything only. Don't let them kill me. Don't let them kill me. Ah, uh, get up. Can you ever forgive me? Oh, I didn't understand, but I do now. So you uh, came here to write a book, did you? Well, that was my original idea. You know, I, I don't know yet whether you people are kidding me or not. They got somebody? I get from the commercial house, Chief. Before I open this thing, I want to tell you something. If this turns out to be a bunch of cigar coupons, I'm going to smash somebody sure. I don't intend to be strong, even if I am a small town cop. Great Scott! It's the real thing! That two hundred thousand dollars belongs to me! No, no, that, that, that's my money! That's only evidence! Get away! Chief, I... Don't tell me what to do. I know my business. Hello? Give me one three central quick. Hello? Hello, is that you, Betty? Now listen, Betty, get this clear. Get some things together and get the children ready and take that five o'clock train to New York. Never mind now, listen. Then take the first and quickest train that goes to Montreal. Montreal. I'll be there waiting. Now do as I tell you. Why, we're going to live there. Montreal. I don't know. Hey, how do you spell Montreal? M O A. Listen. Go to Canada, any part of it. I'll find you. Hey, what are you going to do? You heard what I said. I'm going to Canada. Canada, I hope you freeze to death. You mean you're going to steal that money? Why shouldn't I steal my gang of crooks like this? I'm going to have one glorious time for the rest of my life and send my two boys to college. Well, you can't get away with it. Get away with it. Get away with it. Get away with it. Now let me see you try to get it. <laughs> Watch the rotten stuff burn. What have you done now? the money. A fortune, good Lord. Hey, I'll have my men in here and I'll shoot you down like a pack of hounds. Hey, got somebody. Look, look. <laughs> a ghost, a ghost, a real ghost. Take it away! I didn't mean to kill her! Take it away! Let me out of here! It's a graveyard! The seventh key! Who are you? I'm the owner of Baldpate Inn. Two policemen refused to allow me to pass, so I shot them both dead. What? Why, this can't be true. It isn't true. Why, I'm, I'm a raving maniac. Hello, Mac. I've just arrived. And who are all these people? Have they interrupted you in your work? Great heavens, man. What kind of a place is this? Nothing but crooks, murderers, policemen, dead people walking all over the place. Hundreds of thousands of dollars and keys, keys, keys. You win, I lose. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mac. I'm not going to hold you to your wager. I just want you to know it isn't real. Oh, well, for heaven's sakes, what's it all about? Well, I just wanted to prove to you how improbable these awful stories you've been writing would seem if they really happened. Now, I arrived at Rooten tonight at 9 o'clock, went to director of the Empire Theatre, told the manager of our bet and framed the whole plan. Now I'd like you to meet the members of our local stock company. <laughs> 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 
do, 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 do you mean these people are all actors in a stock company? Yes. <laughs> well, I... <laughs> well, <laughs> well that, that certainly is a clever idea. <laughs> 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 Come on, darling, let's go. <laughs> darling, uh, darling, you, you, you know him quite well, Mary. Oh, yes, Mr. Bland and I are married. Really? And it was love at first sight. Come along, it's getting late. Remember, rehearsal in the morning. Yeah, and a matinee this afternoon. Good night, Mr. McGee. Good night, Mrs. Bland. You must be awfully tired, sweetheart. Oh, no, darling. No? Ah, come right in, folks. You're right on time. Well, did you finish your book? I uh, just made it. Were you disturbed at all? Nary a sound, Miss Grimby. It's an ideal spot to come to to be absolutely alone, all right. No ghosts? <laughs> Nary a ghost except the one contained in the manuscript. Oh, but some wild and woolly scenes have been enacted in this room since you left last night. Oh, what happened? Oh, nothing really. In my story, this old hotel has been full of the craziest people you ever saw. I brought you some nice sandwiches and some hot tea. Really? Well, it's awfully kind, Mrs. Grimby, but if I'm going to catch the first train, I'll have to step on it. I have a very important breakfast engagement. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> Hello, Grimby. Good morning, Mr. Bentley. This is Miss Norton. Miss Norton. How do you do? How are you, Mac? Oh, hell. Hello, Mrs. Quimbin. Well, Very well, thank you, sir. How have you been since yesterday? Fine. Say, did you finish on time? Just made it. Oh, good. Well, and I wrote you both in the story. Really? No. Oh. oh, yes, you're, you're my heroine. And a newspaper woman, too. Do you mean to say that you completed a novel in 24 hours? Just made it. You asked me to write something worthy of myself. <clears throat> Read that one. Well, I'm the goat. <laughs> Quimby. I've decided to build a cellar under this place. Come on, I'll show you where it's going to be. Oh, wait a minute. Isn't there a cellar under it now? No, there never has been. I slipped up on that one. Oh, I wrote one in with ghosts and dead bodies. Oh, everything. <laughs> and love at first sight, I suppose, huh? Come on, light. What did you call your story? Seven Keys to Bald Fate. What a strange title. Mm-hmm. Has a strange ending, too. Why, how did it end? Oh, I left the hero standing there, looking into the fireplace, thinking. Thinking? Thinking of the girl he loves. Oh. I was thinking about a breakfast engagement that I have for this morning. <clears throat> well, I've been thinking about it, too. I think we ought to do something about it, don't you? Mm-hmm. Uh, by, by the way, uh, you're not married. Oh, no, of course not. And you're not engaged? No. Why wouldn't you like to be? Are you proposing to me? Even if I did propose, would you accept? I might. Mary. I'm hungry, aren't you? Mm. Mm. 